The ribs are ready. Oh, that membrane ruined them. Eating pork ribs with the membrane still attached should be illegal. Not really, they taste good. In this video, I'm gonna show you the most easiest, fuss-free way to cook pork ribs. So just sit right back, grab a drink or two, and let's get into it. Okay, we need more beers, more beers! Come on, you know the drill by now. Subscribe, like, comment, share. It all helps. The easiest way to smoke pork ribs would be stop worrying about myths and wrong information. I'll start by acquiring some pork ribs. I walked in on Mick from Gippsland Premier Meat boning out some pork belly, and I said, Mick, give me those ribs. So you know what he did? He threw these ribs that weigh 850 grams at me and said, good luck getting the membrane off those suckers. I'll show him we're not removing the membrane for this cook. Has the whole world gone mad? So what does that mean? All the prep work's done. Time for a drink. Did you know that removing the pork membrane from ribs started as a joke between two brothers from Texas in 1843. Now to season these ribs. No need for a binder. We're raw dogging these ribs today. Say what now? But we do need to spice things up. So into a rub shaker goes two tablespoons of sweet paprika, one tablespoon of brown sugar, one tablespoon of kosher salt with a whistle, two teaspoons of coarsely ground black pepper, one teaspoon of mustard powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, and a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Now just shake this up like you're a bartender making a martini for James Bond. And then from a height of 30 centimetres, you can start to apply the rub to the back side of these ribs. This just allows enough time for the particles in the rub to separate before hitting your meat, ensuring you get much more even coverage of all the ingredients. And once you think you've got enough seasoning on that pesky membrane, give it a consensual pat and flip it over. And now apply the rub to the fleshy side of the meat, not forgetting the sides and the ends. Now what's left to do is give them a slap and leave them aside for about 30 to 60 minutes to glaze over. You'll see as the rub draws out moisture from the outer edges of the pork, it'll start making that dry rub look more like a glaze than a rub. Today, I'm gonna to be using a 57 centimeter Weber kettle and I'm gonna be utilizing the snake method because I wanna be smoking at temps of around 150 degrees Celsius today. That's right, hot and fast all the way. And how I'll do that is by carefully stacking briquettes into the Weber to form the snake. Taking your time to make sure it is set up as neat as possible, you'll get a more even burn that way. And then I'll add 14 briquettes to a chimney starter and light them up. Once they're all lashed over, I'm gonna add them to one end of the snake and it's gonna act like a fuse. I want to add some smoking wood today and I'm choosing cherry. Just place one chunk close to the lit charcoal and the other chunks we're going to place around the snake leaving a 50 mil gap. Add a foil tray to collect some of the drippings. I'll carefully place the grill back in. Nothing but nothing. Put the lid on, making sure all the vents are wide open. And once we get around 30 to 50 degrees Celsius off our target temp, close down the bowl vent to around about halfway closed. The temp will keep climbing, but it will slow down and it should stop around our target temperature. You may have to adjust the bowl vent a little bit here and there. I say between 30 degrees Celsius and 50 degrees Celsius, because on a hotter day, that temp is gonna rise a lot quicker. So on a hot day, start closing it down around 50 degrees Celsius, and on a cooler day, start closing it around 30 degrees Celsius. The Weber's at temp now, and it's been stable at 150 for about 30 minutes. Always make sure you get that temp stable before you put your meat in. The ribs are ready now. As you can see, that dry rub has turned into more of a glaze because the outside has drawn moisture from the pork and is all Moist smut. We can now throw the ribs in, keeping them on the opposite side of that lit fuel. Pop the lid back on, making sure that lid vent is over those ribs. That way we're drawing the heat and the smoke directly over them and around them. And we'll come back and check them in about an hour. Can't wait that long. The best way to attract more smoke on your ribs is easy. Just like these ribs, make sure the outside is Moist, smut. We are one hour into the cook. 
Well, 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 what do we have here? Some ribs ready for some loving. The colour is great and the smell is incredible. We just need to lay down a couple of layers of foil. Then adding 75 grams of unsalted butter and two tablespoons of honey and then two tablespoons of brown sugar. Then grab the ribs and we're gonna place them flesh side down on that foil. And then we're gonna wrap them up as tight as a frog's bum. Find them somewhere else to peddle your digital smut. And place them back in the Weber on the opposite side of that lit fuel. Pop the lid back on, making sure that lid vents over our ribs. Although we're not drawing any smoke into them, we still want that heat centralized around our ribs. And we'll check back on them in an hour and a half. Why are you torturing me like this? Why? A frog's bum is the tightest thing known to man because it has to be waterproof. Today, I'm using a smoking setup for hot and fast at 150 degrees Celsius. And all up, these ribs are gonna be done in less than three hours. Or for those of you who love to use my beer timer, you're looking at a six beer cook. Cheers. I'm gonna need more beer. Ribs cooked in under three hours is good enough let alone we didn't have to remove that pesky membrane. The ribs have been wrapped for an hour and a half now, so we can get them off the heat and unwrap them. And then using a wooden skewer, we're gonna probe the meat between the bone, like there's meat anywhere else. But they're not smart people. If the meat is tender, flip the ribs over, and we're going to roll up all the edges of the foil, and this is called boating. Place the ribs back in the Weber away from that lit fuel. Pop the lid back on with the lid vent directly over our ribs and we're gonna leave them alone for 15 minutes to allow them to tack up. Now, if you are a saucy type of person, this is where you'd apply your sauce to your ribs. The ribs are ready. Now place the ribs upside down on a cutting board and that way you can see the bones and you can easily cut these into single ribs. You really are a genius. Funny thing about advice is most people just follow others. Sometimes it's good to ask yourself why? 